Voyager probes 1 and 2 are the most important reducers we have, and through them we were able to understand the universe in a different way. These probes transmit the information of the farthest parts of the solar system in real time and at the speed of light, information that we may not even have the opportunity to check for years. But it's been a while since the Voyager probe sent us strange information from deep space and we were able to understand what happened beyond the system, an event that surprised even NASA engineers. Now, what are these strange messages that Voyager 1 sent us from deep space? Are the messages good or bad? In this video from Space Fact, we talk about these unknown messages that were sent by Voyager 1. Voyager missions have played an important role in space exploration for us for about 45 years. For the first time, we obtained our most important knowledge and information by these two twin probes. NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft carries a golden disk of Earth data with it. It has a tape recorder that only has a capacity of eight audio tracks. Its memory is extremely weak and small. The technology of that time allowed them to put a memory on it, and the Voyagers that are three million times smaller and weaker than today's mobile phones. Anyway, you can see that these probes are still operational. Apart from these two probes, we don't have any other operational probes that have examined the sun and the planets at the end of the system so well for us. These probes were able to obtain information from the heliosphere and interstellar space. No spacecraft has been able to reveal the sun and its effects on the system so well. We have a golden disk on the Voyager spacecraft with information from the Earth. So if one day advanced, beings can find these probes. Understand that we humans have sent these voyages from the Earth. Maybe one day we will be able to communicate with those beings. This golden disk has up to a billion years of information. It can remain intact and keep them healthy. What the Voyager 1 probe sent us was strange information from the end of the solar system, a region at the end of the heliosphere of the system. There, a strange and intense force from the interstellar region collides with the boundary of the system. The heliosphere is the magnetic and almost oval-shaped region around the system which is created due to the magnetic radiation of the sun, and it is the boundary of the solar system in a way. This heliosphere becomes smaller and larger with the change of sunspots over time as if it is breathing. Scientists for the system Solar has set a boundary, and they say that after that boundary, we can enter the interstellar space. This boundary is located at the end of the heliosphere, where the flow of charged particles of the sun ends. These charged particles are ionized currents from the sun that push into the stellar space and create a boundary for the system in the form of an elliptical environment. In order to better understand the boundary of the system, it is possible to exactly compare the Sun's heliosphere to the Earth's atmosphere. At an altitude of 100 kilometers from the Earth, the boundary between the sky and the atmosphere ends and the space begins. The boundary between the Earth and the space is called Kármán Line. The same has been determined for the Sun. There is a boundary between the system and the interstellar space. The solar system and the interstellar space are called heliopause, where the solar wind ends and the interstellar space begins. When the voyages were launched into space, we had no idea about the boundary of the solar system. When the information from the voyages reached us, we realized that the boundary of the heliosphere region is beyond the boundary of Neptune and Pluto. At that time, Pluto was the ninth planet of the solar system. No one knew exactly where interstellar space begins. Where exactly is it? In 1992, voyagers received signals at the end of the planet Neptune, frequencies between 2 and 3 khz. Some scientists believed that this frequency in space, it is related to the solar flares where it collides with the interstellar space and the boundary of the system may be in the same area as Neptune. 
with further developments and more detailed investigations of the information that the Voyagers sent us, scientists realized that the pulses of solar energy that collide with the interstellar medium form a boundary, which is the heliopause. This border is equivalent to 116 to 117 astronomical units. It was on August 5, 2012 that Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause and entered the interstellar space. Of course, it cannot leave the Oort cloud for thousands of years. But according to the definition of heliopause, the Oort cloud is not inside the solar system at all. Now, how do we know that Voyager has entered the interstellar space? On August 5, 2012, Voyager reached a distance of 6.121 AU from the Sun. The information sent from Voyager shows, he said that solar wind particles with high energy evaporate and there is no more trace of them. On the other hand, cosmic radiation from outside the system that was intercepted by the Helio Voyager was now hitting Voyager and was detectable, indicating that Voyager had entered interstellar space. It was in early 2012 that solar storms erupted. The following year, the plasma left over from those storms passed Voyager 1, which picked up strong signals and Voyager detected them. These frequencies indicated that Voyager had entered a denser and stronger atmosphere. But scientists weren't sure what really happened to Voyager. They only guessed that it was out of the space of the system. But they had no other reason to prove their claim, because this was the first probe to enter the interstellar space. Until the same thing happened again in Somba 2019 for Voyager 2, and it was able to sense the density caused by the collision of protons, neutrons, electrons, and other interstellar charged particles. Voyager 2 officially entered interstellar space on the same date. Voyager 2 showed that the events that happened six years ago for Voyager 1 had fallen by no accident, and there is indeed a strong interaction between particles at the boundary of the solar system. Currently, both voyagers are drifting away outside the system's borders and sending us their information. Considering their distance and the fact that they send information at the speed of light, it takes about 22 hours to reach us. Both voyagers are moving in opposite directions in space and moving away from each other. Recently, scientists also said that Voyager 1 recorded humming sounds that indicated the amount of gas in the interstellar region. To deal with these gases, voyagers have heating devices that can survive in the cold of space. For NASA itself, it is strange how voyagers could still work in this cold temperature of space because they say that the temperature in which the voyagers are located now is colder than what they predicted when they were sent into space. Voyager communication system one year ago got into trouble. News was filled that Voyager was out of reach, but contact was later re-established. Even now, two spacecraft are working without problems. Of course, they are not without problems. A few years ago, Voyager 1's internal computer had a problem and was sending wrong information to the ground. As a result, its path in space changed a little. But later, NASA experts changed Voyager's internal computer. They instructed it to work with its previous memory and the problem is solved for now. No one is sure how long these two spacecraft will last in space, but they have given us our biggest and first great achievements so far. Maybe they will give us the strangest information in the future. Maybe in these years we will see that one of the old civilizations of the world was able to find Voyager and communicate with it. And maybe that day we could see new civilizations in the world. Thank you for watching this video. Please support us. We can't continue without your support. We wish you the best until next time.